from the days when you could just call a game what it was. Same name, different game, pro wrestling. Yes, wrestling video game fans, on the stick of maniacs, what a maneuver listeners, and retro game fans from the world over. It's that time of year once again for Joey Pink to invade. Same name, different game. WrestleMania is this weekend, and in celebration, we're taking a look at a couple of games from the original Nintendo vs. Sega Wars. It's pro wrestling on the Master System and the NES. Now let's get started with a little history. Both of our titles this episode were originally released in Japan in 1986. Pro wrestling was at a fever pitch both in Japan and in the US at that time. Here, Hulkamania was running wild, brother, as Hulk Hogan was in the midst of his first WWF title reign, leading the WWF to nationwide domination and the end of the territory system. In Japan, Antonio Inoki and Giant Baba were duking it out as All Japan and New Japan, Japan's top two promotions, climbed to new heights in popularity with the help of both international stars and homegrown Japanese sensations like Riki Choshu, Mitsuharu Misawa, Masahiro Chono, and more. Now the first game we're looking at is Pro Wrestling for the Sega Master System. This game was released in the US in 1986. It's infamous for its cover art. It's got this guy on the box here, putting himself in a headlock. I don't know what's going on there, but I'll tell you this. That's not the only interesting thing about this game. It's got an interesting history, all its own. This game actually began life as Goku Aku Dome Dump Matsumoto for the Sega Mark III, the Japanese Master System. The game featured the likeness of Joshi legend Dump Matsumoto. Now for the uninitiated, Joshi is Japanese women's pro wrestling and it features, without qualification, some of the best pro wrestling you will see in the world. At the time, Matsumoto was the biggest heel, literally and figuratively, in all Japan women's pro wrestling. Unrelated to Giant Baba's all Japan pro wrestling, all Japan Women was the premier ladies wrestling league in Japan from the 1960s until its closing in 2005. In Japan, the game featured Matsumoto and her then tag team partner, the legendary Bull Nakano. It also featured six other ladies, including the Jumping Bomb Angels. It was then brought to the US as simply pro wrestling. The real life ladies were changed to fictional men, but the gameplay remained intact. Trust me, retro game maniacs, when I say this is not a good thing. If you want to talk about gameplay, well, there's not much going on here. This game plays like a simplified version of Data East and Taito's Tag Team Wrestling. The only problem with that? Tag Team Wrestling came out in the arcade a full three years before this game hit the Master System. The game still features four teams. The only difference between them is that the two heel teams, the ones on the left, can use a chair found outside the ring, and the two face teams, the ones on the right, can come off the top turnbuckle. Other than that, there's not much difference. While standing, you can do three things. Punch, kick, no, not block or chop, but a running body attack. That just means you run into your opponent. Not a clothesline, not a drop kick, you just run into them. That's it. Anything more requires your opponent to be down. Now you might be asking, 
What about the grapple system? And I might say to you, there is no grapple system. Yeah, you heard that right. There's no grapple system in a game called Pro Wrestling. It's true. It's damn true. And once your opponent is down, you can do one move, which is sometimes a grapple, but often a submission or elbow drop type maneuver. Or you can Irish whip them. And the hits keep coming. You heard me right. You can only Irish whip a downed opponent, one that's on the mat. That doesn't even make sense. After sending your opponent into the ropes, you can do two moves. One with the one button and the other with the two button. The moves vary by wrestler, but it doesn't really matter. The result is the same. That's it. I'm not kidding. <sighs> this game is simplistic. It's so simplistic, it might even be worse than WrestleMania on the NES, and you fans know how I feel about that game. So that's it, and the worst part, the worst part? You have to win 30 matches, that's right, 30 matches to beat the game. It's not even that it's hard, it's just tedious. It's like they hope you get bored before you finish it. I certainly did. So this game, pile drive it. Throw it out of my ring. Let's move on to our next pro wrestling. Oh yeah, you hear that? If you're my age, that music likely takes you right back to being a kid sitting on the floor in front of your TV getting pumped for some awesome pro wrestling action. Yeah! Pro Wrestling, one of Nintendo's black box series of games, early titles for the NES. This is the only, to date, the only pro wrestling video game that Nintendo has ever done. There's never been a sequel or anything like that. A remake and even very few cameo appearances in games like Smash Brothers and that kind of thing. Kind of makes you wonder. Well, this game also has an interesting history all of its own. In Japan, pro wrestling was a Famicom disc system game known as ProRes Famicom Wrestling Association. It was converted to a cartridge and brought here pretty quickly, and with good reason. Besides the logos, the game is identical in its US incarnation. It features six wrestlers and a seventh hidden boss. All fictional, but based off of real wrestlers. But that's not even the most interesting bit of this game's history. Now I've hinted at it in the past, and I brought it up in an episode of Obscure Old Games a couple years ago. But here, I'm going to give you the straight dope just for the same name different game universe. But in case you forgot, first let's roll that clip from Obscure Old Games. Oh, it's true. The animations for Fire Pro look nearly identical to some of the ones from NES Pro Wrestling. The reason? The man behind both the games was the same. The director, the Bobby Heenan, if you will, of these games was the same man, Masato Masuda. Before he helped to form human entertainment, he worked for a company called Try, T-R-Y, with several other developers that would go with him to start human a few years after. And they were subcontracted by Nintendo to help develop pro wrestling. Hence, why these animations match up just that well. Now you might remember that back in 2006, Pro Wrestling was given a rating by the ESRB, but never released on Nintendo's Virtual Console service, and in fact, still has not been released on Nintendo's Virtual Console service on any of their systems in the United States. The reason for that is that Try actually owns the copyright, or owned the copyright, for this game, so for Nintendo to re-release it, they would have to pay the current copyright holder, probably Spike, to re-release it. And we know that Nintendo's not big on doing that kind of thing, as evidenced by the lack of re-releases of the arcade version of Donkey Kong, which has a similar situation. Now, Try eventually did go on to become Human Entertainment, headed by Matsuda. And they would, of course, as we know, go on to start the Fire Pro Wrestling series. So, in a way, NES Pro Wrestling is the blueprint for Fire Pro. At any rate, the game came here 
and caught on and the rest is history. Now I probably don't have to talk about this game much because I'm sure most of you out there are familiar with it. Still, let's go ahead and cover the basics. You can kick and punch, but punches are useless. Grapples are initiated when you get close to your opponent, and each wrestler has several different moves that can be done from here, including a signature move unique to each character. Well, except Kincorn Karn. I mean, he has no unique grapples, but he also sucks. Beyond that, you can throw your opponent to the floor, hit him with a suicide dive, you can climb the turnbuckle, in fact, all the characters can, not just half of them. You can do actual running attacks, not just run your body into your opponent. Now match options aren't exactly abundant in this game. You get standard one-on-one, -on -one, and that's it, even in the two-player mode. But the gameplay is so much deeper than that Master System game, even though that game does have tag matches. But hey, let's go ahead and put these head-to-head. -head. Graphics and sound. So technically, we know that the Master System graphics are better. Master System had a bigger color palette, but bigger doesn't always mean better. And the NES graphics just have a clean, unified look. It's really great. I love it, and I think it stands the test of time a lot better. Musically, it's also no contest. The NES, I know the title screen theme is the same as all the other black box sports games but the gameplay music is awesome, it's super catchy, really well done. In fact, let's take another listen. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right, time to give the edge. Come on, you knew who was going to get their hand raised from the word go, and it's NES Pro Wrestling. But, to be honest, this isn't exactly the greatest wrestling game to ever come down the pike. In fact, it's not even the best wrestling game on the NES. That's a story for another day. Still, it puts down the Master System no problem. It's fun for about 30 minutes if you're playing by yourself. You could probably stretch that to an hour, an hour and a half if you've got a human opponent to play with. But hey, Master System game? It's not fun at all, so unless you want to pick it up so you can show people that weird cover art, I would avoid it. That's all I got for you this time out, maniacs. I will tell you this though, check out OnTheStick.com, check out the What A Maneuver weekly wrestling podcast, part of the OnTheStick.com podcasting network and featuring yours truly. And remember, I'm Joey Pink, 
and the pleasure was all yours. Ha, 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 ha.